So next standard is on SA250. So a small standard as compared to the previous 240. Now what is SA240's objective? You have to see primarily there are two types of law here. Which of those? SA 250 talks about two types of law. The law which has got a direct effect. Direct effect means you can see that impact on the PNL account, on the balance sheet or financial statement. For this, what you should do? You have to check, obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. See, whenever you see the word called sufficient appropriate audit evidence, that means you have to perform procedure. What is that procedure? Look into the standard. And there is some another type of law called other laws. Other laws are the one which you can't see in the face of the PNL account or the balance sheet. For this, you have to obtain some identify non-compliance by performing specific procedures. You need not see, see the difference here. Direct laws, you have to check the compliance. Other laws, you have to check the non-compliance. This is like audit. This is like a review. Audit means more efforts. You have to check, perform so many procedures. Why? You have to get a positive assurance. This is like a review because you have to look only into the exceptions and respond. If you find any non-compliances, you have to respond. So primarily we have got to two types of law, direct effects like Companies Act, Income Tax Act, you can see the impact in the p account and the balance sheet. Other laws, you don't see that. Now, how the management is going to comply with the law? And why auditor is, cannot detect all the non-compliances? Can you tell me how the audit management is going to comply with the law? Who is responsible to comply with the law? That you know, how they do it. Only and only one answer. If I ask you how management is going to comply with the law, only and only one answer for that. There is no other way actually. Huh? Your answer is very straightforward. The only way to comply with the law is to establish internal control. Is there any name for internal control? Alternative name? Uh, the alternative name for internal control is policies and procedure. Because in exam, they will not tell you straight away uh, internal control. In inter level, they will ask you. But in final, they will ask you policies and procedure for compliance with the law. So you have to make an interpretation. It is the internal control they are asking. Now tell me which type of internal controls you can establish to, to comply with the law. Management is responsible for internal control. No? What type of internal controls they can establish to comply with the laws and regulations which is applicable to them? Ah, now you tell me, whichever something you told me. No? First you said me some. In-house legal. That's the only way? Correspondence with the, is the internal control? Ah, don't mix the answers. Huh? Is there any other way you can ensure compliance with the law? Huh? Training the employees, yes, your answer keys are correct. Because well, this is an examination question, what I am asking you. Then, that's what, internal or external legal counsel. You can say, you can split into two, outsource it to the external, appoint appropriate external, then, training, that's the only two things. Register you maintain, okay, let us see the answer. See, there are eight points, out of which five you are expected to write. Appropriate system of internal control as develop a code of conduct. Tell the employees what is right, what is not to be done. Proper training to the employees. Take strict discipline actions because if you don't take, even though you don't, they don't comply, no? If you don't take in action, next time they will continue it. Separate legal department. Entrust the internal auditors. Set up IT system. Entain the register. See, these are all the keywords. And I'm telling you, if you see the, I'll share, no? All the examination this thing huh? one word one mark let me see if i can get that yes now what is the why auditor is not able to detect when management is going to involve in non compliance with the law why it is not easy for an auditor to detect it? Sorry? Oh, ex not an expert in law. Ah, that's what I am not an expert in law. Then? Ah, 
Uh, that's what I'm not supposed to, I'm not an expert in law. I don't know which all laws are applicable. That's the, that's one reason. That's why non-compliance I may not be aware. Is there any other reason? Yeah, that's what, some uh, may be indirect. Uh, no, you have an example which will not fall. I hope, see. Um, yeah, some uh, loss, but but the question is not that. No, see, question here is, see, if something doesn't fall within my scope, like some MD murders CFO, there is a non-compliance with the law. Yeah, is it part of my scope? No, then I will not discuss. Let's say two fifty will not apply only. But uh, there is one non-compliance which has got a financial effect. It can be direct or it can be indirect. I become responsible, but I am not able to detect it. Why? Because first answer is correct. So, a lot of the things are not captured and more importantly, you may conceal it from me. And I am not an expert in law. So, something may not have a direct effect. That is a big challenge for me. So, this is your answers okay, for these two things. Now, how to achieve your objective? First, check with the compliance with the law. With this objective 1 and 2 is complied. Then, perform audit procedures when you find out non-compliance, report it and document it. Now, what audit procedures you should perform to object the compliance with the law? Always and always, the first audit procedure to perform the check the compliance is to know which laws are applicable. So, for this you have to understand the legal framework which is applicable and check the compliance with the direct law and perform specific procedure with the other laws. Now, how do you obtain specific audit procedure to identify the non-compliance with the other law? So, how do you obtain the understanding of the legal framework? How do you obtain the understanding of the legal framework? My previous experience, enquiry with the management, okay, enquiry like my other audit engagement where I have seen updates happening. So, company law, knowledge my increases, I will understand. How do you check the compliance with the direct effect? Standards cannot tell you, audit it. How? Inspection of the returns, watch the challenge. Now important question for your final exams. How? What all the specific procedures to perform for non-compliance? Like compliance, they cannot tell you, standards cannot tell you. But whether any non-compliance happened with the other laws, how do you come to know? You cannot appoint a detective, no? you cannot tell your article shouldn't stay there 24 hours. How do you find out? First question is always ask the management, then uh, check the legal fields and something sometime back you told you, correspondence you check the correspondence. Uh, these are all the cases of specific like enquiry with the legal counsel, inspect the correspondence, be alert, read the MOM, check the substantive procedures, obtain the representation. And what if you find in this process any non-compliance? Maybe it is a direct or other. If you find any non-compliance, what to do? Obviously, if it is not affecting, then there is no point. There is no materiality means you will not talk about it only. You will ignore it. What if, see, for example, Paytm. I don't know whether in a compliance or not. Today's newspaper, I said, saw that RBI has put some 5 crore rupees fines and penalty. And somewhere I read that. 1000 account holders, one PAN number. See, this can kill that. Huh? Paytm can get killed because of one this issue. RBA may cancel means people will dump their shares. Nobody wants. Then cash crunch comes means Paytm gone for a toss. See, this is an impact which can happen, which can affect your going concern also. Maybe in upcoming days, they may ask you some questions on like this. Now, tell me students, when you identify one non-compliance, what you will do? Not from the your real life example, from your memory I am asking you, what you are supposed to do? Communicate with the management, okay, first discuss with the management, discuss with the legal team, check with your expert because you are not an expert and if required you have to, may have to modify your opinion, check the implication on other aspects of audit like going concern and take appropriate actions like withdrawal from the engagement, clear? So, this question they may ask you and what about the reporting of suspected or identified non-compliance? So, all non-compliances you have to report to TCWG. Auditors, you may have to modify, check the going concern, key audit matter or CARO. 
for regulatory you have to take up the legal advice because every non compliance you need not go and report there so if you have got a reporting responsibility only you have to report the non compliances and the last is the documentation all identified non compliances you may have to document it okay so next is our sa 260 we will quickly see this series see before that again just to refresh your mind with the 260 see there are two types of board structures in the world one is called a unitary and this is called a dual in india we have got unitary that means board of directors and the managing directors like management are one and the same they are not two separate entities that means the management itself is involved in the board of directors there is a ceo called ceo come some chairman or whatever the ceo may be the director but in dual structure, TCWG is totally different from the management. It's called a tier 1 and tier 2. In India, we don't have. In Germany, China, we have got this type of structure. Understood, no? So, audit committee is a subgroup of the board of directors. So, this you need to have an understanding. They are independent. But they are not a TCWGs. You cannot communicate something to the audit committee and say, I have communicated as per 260. No. You are, your responsibility is to communicate to the board, not to any committees there. And you have to see to it that if anything has been communicated to the community, it has been appropriately communicated to the board. Now, who is the TCWG here? In India, board of directors are TCWG. But maybe if you go to Germany, there is a two board of directors. One board of TCWG, board of management. None from the management are part of the board here. And none from the board are part of the management. But in India, we may have a mixture. This structure is clear to you? Yes. Now, what is the objective? Objective is to communicate very clearly your responsibility, planned scope and timing, obtain information relevant to the audit, communicate significant observations, and promote effective two-way communication. I always give this example. It is like a patient and a doctor. Now, a patient has to identify which doctor I need to communicate. Because you have to establish that one-to-one -one relationship. Otherwise, patient is in a danger. Now, we are in this, who is our patient? Who is this patient? Auditor itself is the patient when it comes to SA 260. Because we need to identify TCWG with whom we have to speak. Because TCWG are the one who take the decision. If I am a patient, I need to figure out the right doctor who takes a decision on me. And if that doctor is not able to, I am not able to figure out who is the doctor. And everybody, tomorrow it is, I, somebody comes and tells me, tomorrow morning operation, who decided? Some nurse decided it seems. Imagine my situation. I will wonder, no? See, because when I have gone there, I know that there is one guy who takes the ultimate responsibility here. Who is the doctor there? No, whether that is a doctor or whether it is a hospital. That's what we have to first figure out. And we have to communicate all responsibilities, obtain the information, communicate observations, and promote effective two-way communication. For this, there are five requirements. One, identify TCWG, no exam questions. Communicate the matter, heart of this standard. So spend time here. Establish effective two-way communication, important. Adequacy of two-way communication. They have cut short lot many things from your new syllabus. Documentation is a small aspect there. Now, what are the aspects you need to communicate? There are four aspects you need to communicate. Responsibility of the auditor. What is your responsibility? Opinion. Tell them very clearly, not to investigate. Planned scope and timing of audit. Can you tell planned scope and timing? Sir, when I am going to come for audit? When I am going to do? Yes, you have to do it. Are Papa, they have to align the resources for you. No? But don't compromise unpredictability. You have to tell the materiality, but not the performance materiality. Independent status of the auditor, that all the relationships with me, my client, my associates, with you, your subsidiaries, and then significant findings from audit. Now, how many significant findings are there? Now, there are six significant findings. Now, six significant findings will go again deeper. The first is the qualitative aspect of NC. Significant findings means you started to perform audit. Otherwise, how do you find? The first thing is qualitative aspects of entities accounting policies. What do you mean by qualitative aspects? 
there is one annexure given. In that annexure, they have told you the qualitative aspects. Okay, okay. Maybe there are no questions. That's why I didn't discuss. It is not there in the study material. See, this chart is purely based on your study material. Previously, I had discussed everything there. Why? Because previously pronouncement also they have attached. No, so they can ask you from anywhere. This time, my gut feeling says that high probably questions may come from the study material only. So, if you have time, you can always. If you want, I will share the extra material. But focus these questions first. So there is no question on qualitative aspects, but there is an important question on significant difficulties and significant matters. Written representation is a small thing, change in the form and content, suppose if there is a change in the form you have to communicate and other significant matters like strategy change, annual report, uh, misstatements discussed with this TCWG, etc. EQCR matters to be discussed. Now what are the significant difficulties faced during audit? Yes, tell me. Now it is a memory time. What all the significant difficulties which you face during audit, which you have to communicate to TCWG? No, what do you mean by significant difficulty? What do you mean by significant difficulty? That means difficult, I cannot continue with my audit. Sorry? Ah, not giving access. Then? Time constraints, delay in response. See, my time constraint, uh, okay, it can, I can try to understand. See, here the, you have told me try, time constraint. I will look into the keywords. Now, time constraint seems to be correct. Yeah, because suddenly I, then I should sit and interpret what is there in your mind. I may have to interpret like, I started with some work. Then suddenly I found that there is a deeper involved, which I may not be able to complete within the time. Followed, no? But if it would have been highly preferred if you would have given me a keyword which matches with the answers. Pressure from the, within the time, time limits, I can see that, okay. I can connect it somewhere there. Not uh, uh, limitations on the scope. Okay, so let us see what all the difficulties. Significant delay in providing information. Management is delaying. Unreasonable time limit to complete. Okay, so you said something time limit, no? So I have to interpret, okay, it must be unreasonable time limit. Unexpected efforts. That means I thought evidence I'll gather like this, but unexpectedly so much came. Unavailability of the information. I thought information I'll get, but management is telling not possible. The fire, fire happened and information got burned. Restrictions on the scope. You said there something on the, like don't, what, is, what did you say? not communicating with the external. You told me one case, but what I can say, restrictions on the scope, which covers everything there. No, I may award the mark because thinking that, okay, you are trying to communicate me this particular point. But understand, uh, there are two things. One, significant difficulties, okay, matters versus examples. Have you observed that in the examination question, they will ask you this, significant matters and examples of significant matters. You told was an example of a matter. So I, I don't know how it uh, evaluator may take. There are indicators and examples of indicators. Be clear. Significant uh, our transactions outside the normal course of business matters and examples of indicators. So you have to be very clear when you tell what the, because see ultimately one line will fetch you one answer, but is that appropriate answer in that circumstance? And the last one is management is unwilling to assess the going concerns. See, if you give me any answer, six to seven points out of this, straightforward, clean. And you understood now every point here, why it is relevant at this point of time. Okay, now what are the significant matters discussed with the management? No, you may be discussing certain things with the management. See, it is not significant difficulty. No, but it is a very significant matters. Like for example, uh, patient's son comes and discusses with the doctor. Or I can say something like, mm, no, you go and discuss something with the nurse. Nurse is like a management, no. Should you go and tell the doctor also? Like you said, stomach ache. Nurse came and came, gave you some injection. Should you inform this to the management also? Or DCWG with the doctor? Ah, which is that? Like this nurse, you said fever. Nurse gave you one dollar 650. Should you go and tell the doctor? 
that depends now nah, that's what no what is significant what is not significant which significant matters you have to communicate every discussion you need not go and communicate no board of directors which significant matters you have to communicate which significant matters you have to document you remember somewhere in documentation we came significant matters to document which all the significant documents matters we have to document we didn't follow the standards on audit, accounting standards professional judgment no so okay first i'll go back and ask you one question in 230 we came across came across in sa 230 we came across significant matters the auditor shall document what all the significant matters auditor shall document you please refer if you don't remember you can refer do you see significant matters which an auditor shall document what all the points ah significant risk then i asked how many significant risk somebody told six then uh indicators of misstatement so these are all the significant matters i need to document now which are the significant matters which i discussed with the management i need to communicate to tcwg both are different questions which aspects you will cover same thing you will tell no you have to say significant events occurred during the year business conditions assessing affecting your risk of misstatement management consultation with the other accountants on accounting and auditing matters matters of disagreement with the management and discussion on application of ss so these are all the five important aspects whenever you discuss with the management at the same time you have to communicate to the tcwg also so probably they may ask you some questions on this significant matters so we may write anything else there but the probably if your answer contains these keys like significant events occurred during the year like fire happened and when the fire happened with whom you discussed you discussed with the management now you have to evaluate should i discuss with the tcwg also on this because it is one of the significant event no or it can be a fraud also it can be anything the next is establishing two way communication process so you have to check you have to establish a two way communication process and you have to evaluate the effectiveness of it such evaluation need not be done by designing specific procedures what do you mean by two way communication like you need to be free to communicate with each other now it is very important okay auditor shall establish the form timing and expect a general consent like when you are going to talk to establish a two way communication with the doctor do you ask them sir when i can call you how i should call you should i personally come and tell you or should i can is it okay over the phone like you discuss in before only this is a two way communication process now how do you evaluate whether a two way communication process is established or not is it necessary when the board meeting is happening you stand outside and give one miss call and see whether the person is lifting the phone or not no is it required no that is what standard says such evaluation need not be done by designing any specific procedure like send one mail and see whether he is re re responding or not no not required you have to do it with your observation so when you talk to them you observe them and say how they react like whatever questions you ask no they tell wait 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 i'll call my management you they call cfo that means without management presence they don't talk to you that itself indicated that they two way communication is not there now when you ask any question they don't ask only to the point how much you ask that much only they answer there is a problem here see that means they are not opened up follow no with your observations you have to figure out and why it is important because it will help you to understand the matters related to the audit it will have help to develop the constructive relationship obtain the information for your audit and it will help to overs understand how the financial reporting process has been overseen and last you have to document whatever communicated orally you have to document when and to whom and whatever you have to document communicated in writing you have to retain the documented uh, communicated copy clear can we proceed further okay as small standards we'll do it quickly now communication deficiency in the internal control now objective of sa 
whatever deficiencies are there in the internal control you have to communicate at the uh, communicate appropriately to TCWG deficiency in the control which in your professional judgment is significant. Now to identify like uh, to communicate the significant deficiency first of all you should identify whether the deficiency is significant or not. No? Then you have to communicate to TCWG management and contents of the written communication. So if you want to meet this objective what is your objective is to appropriately communicate the deficiencies which are significant in your judgment. This is what you need to do, four things. Now, how do you decide whether the deficiency is significant or not? Deficiency in the internal control exists. When? When the deficiency exists? Ah, only there are only two possibilities. Huh? There is no third possibility. One, control is missing. This is called design deficiency. And everything starts from the risk. Risk itself is not there, then there is no question of control also. Risk is there, control is not there or fantastic control is there but it has failed to operate effectively. This is called operating deficiency. But when you find any deficiency, is it significant or not? That depends on what? Every deficiency is a significant deficiency. understood my question no and question sometime you may identify certain deficiency one deficiency or one other deficiency is there on a standalone basis they are not deficient uh, they are not uh, this thing but when you combine them together no it may become a significant deficiency so let us see the significance of a deficiency depends upon whether the misstatement has actually occurred but also on the likelihood of potential magnitude that means today one round of mistake has happened. Is it de significant deficiency? No. But tomorrow, when the transactions are going to increase, this may cumulatively be a very big deficiency. When the pay, like what Google Pay and all transaction happened, once upon a time it was not there. So you, when you talk about the deficiency, you have to consider the likelihood also. See, in the intermediate study material, they have discussed it. In new final syllabus, study material, this discussion is not there. Examples of matter auditor to consider to determine whether deficiency is significant and examples of indicators of significant deficiency. Understood the difference between the two? And two times in two examination questions they have asked this. If you mix these points, one. So first example is examples of matters auditor to consider whether deficiency is significant or not. And second is indicators of significant deficiency. That means by default, say for example, somebody cough, is it significant deficiency in the health? While coughing, blood comes. Is that example of indicator of significant deficiency or it is an example of matter which determine whether the deficiency is significant? Blood is an indicator. Followed, no? So keep this in mind uh, while telling, see, examples of matter, likelihood of deficiency leading to material misstatements in the future is one of the examples of deficiencies found. But whether it is a significant or not, that depends upon how much transaction can happen in the future. Second, volume of activity or could occur, same, interaction of one deficiency with another deficiency, like sugar, is it significant? Deficiency? No. You have got cut over your leg. Is it significant deficiency? You eat every day half kg rasgulla. Is it significant deficiency? No. Volume of activity likelihood in the future. Like there was like one person eats 10 scoop of ice cream every day. There is a problem. Uh, no, when right now there is no problem, but it is eventually possible that that person may have a diabetes. But if you see that the person who has got a cut on a leg, having diabetes plus eating 10 scoop of ice creams per day, do you see that deficiency what you found on a standalone basis is going to become significant? 
So these are all the examples of uh, interaction, cause and the frequency of the expectations, exceptions detected, susceptibility of the loss of the assets, subjectivity of determining estimates, you are not able to figure out how much, like for example, somebody is having sugar, but you don't have the sugar detection methods, then how do you detect, how much you will estimate, how much sugar must be there. It is very difficult. See, today we have got one basis. You check, you take one drop of blood and use it. But before this invention, how difficult it was? Before invention of this uh, blood, uh, blood testing and all. Financial statement amounts to deficiency and importance of the control. See, if you see all this now, on a standalone basis, they may not be deficient. But these are all the factors besides whether it is significant or not. These are all the examples of matters. Now, what are the indicators of significant deficiency? That means, by default, there is a problem there. Like ineffective control environment. In SA315, we are going to discuss about control environment. Control environment is part of what? Under which aspect we are going to talk about control environment? Components of internal control. How many components of internal controls are there? Five. Okay, in that very first is the control environment. If the control environment itself is weak, you see that it is a means there is an indicator of significant deficiency. Absence of ineffective, ineffective risk, risk assessment process. Now, where you come across risk assessment process? Same control and component of internal controls. Ineffective response by the management, control activities. Misstatements directed by the auditor, not printed or directed by the internal control. Disclosure of metal misstatement as prepared items and management inability to oversee the financial reporting process. So these are all the six are the indicators of significant deficiency. So in the new syllabus study material, they have removed it. Now, this is, they said case based question they will ask you. They may ask you any one aspect of this and they may ask you in MCQ. Asking what it is or how do you react to it. Now, communicate the deficiency, all the significant deficiency in writing. Communicate deficiency to the management. And whatever you should, what you should communicate while communicating, you have to prepare one letter of weakness. And this is also called internal control memo or a management letter. So they may use this word uh, management letter. What do you mean by management letter? It is a letter of weakness. Now, what is the description of the deficiency and their potential effect? Significant information. Like, what is the purpose of audit? Purpose of audit is not to carry out the internal audit of uh, your uh, internal controls, but to express opinion. And only those internal controls are considered which is relevant and not all the internal controls. And what I have lim uh, reported to you is limited for the identified during the audit and not all. See, with this information, you will be uh, having what that I can say. You have brought a clarity over the management, like what type of deficiency you have uh, communicated. Yes, clear, no? So, we'll see the questions, exam questions, how they will ask you, which type of uh, questions they will ask you. So, this is all about your uh, essay 265. Okay, the last series of this is 299, joint audit. So, I have, uh, I love to give one example so that you can also connect again. I, you remember I gave the example of cooking. In temple, one function happens. Generally, when you give, one catering should happen, no? like somebody should cook. So, you may give one order to one single cook only. That means 299 is not applicable. But what about you give an order to cooks who cook from different cooks? Now, question comes, if uh, sambar goes for a toss, who is responsible? If banana leaves are not ordered only, everything is ready, leaves are not there. Now, who is responsible for this? All cooks? Ah, that depends upon how the responsibility is distributed. So the objective of this SA 299 is to lay down the principle for conducting joint audit, say like joint cooking. Provide uniform approach for joint audit. Identify the areas of work, individual and the joint responsibilities. Now how to achieve this objective? You have got four requirements. First you have to discuss the responsibility of the joint auditors, very first thing. Because when more than one joint auditors will come, on auditors come, you have to specify the responsibility. Otherwise, success means everybody's baby. Failure means then question comes, who is responsible? This, this auditor says that person is responsible, that will say I am responsible. Now, audit planning, risk assessment and allocation of the work, how should it happen? Audit conclusion and reporting. If you see responsibility of the auditor, 200 series. 
ऑडिट प्लानिंग रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी थ्री हंड्रेड सीरीज कंक्लूजन एंड रिपोर्टिंग सेवन हंड्रेड सीरीज कम्युनिकेशन विद द टी सी डब्ल्यू नाउ वट इज द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द जॉइंट ऑडिटर्स सी जॉइंट ऑडिटर्स हैव गॉट इंडिविजुअल रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दे हैव गॉट जॉइंट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी वॉट दे आर इंडिविजुअली रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मेमोरी फॉर द वर्क विच इज अलॉटेड टू देम देन सी दे आर इंडिविजुअली रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर determining the nature timing extent of the procedure for the allocated area if any area is told to them okay you prepare say sweet how to prepare when to prepare that is your responsibility what ingredients to put that is your judgment because nobody will think now again you might have used one substandard material but ultimately you become responsible for that sweet dish from your payment the money will be deducted Study and evaluate the internal control of the allocated area. Which area you have allocated? You see, because tomorrow somebody may spoil that sweet. So, how the internal control works? You have to take care. Assessment of the risk for the allocated area and communicate any matters relevant to the area responsibility of the other joint auditors. This is your individual responsibility. What is your joint and several responsibility? Famous question. How many joint responsibilities are there? number you should have the count inventory 6 what all the joint responsibility of the auditors ah area which is not distributed then financial reporting framework the form of the report okay joint decision for common audit area work which is not divided everybody is responsible joint decision for common audit area matters brought to the notice and agreed by all ek okay just to remember i'll give you one more i think i had given one more example like some uh, what is that called uh, lizard will fall into sambar this is what i told what should i do now should i throw the sambar sambar is responsibility given to one person or some rat has fell down into that sambar that that responsibility to prepare sambar is one person's responsibility now what he will do he is very chalu first thing is he will come and bring it to the notice of everybody now one discussion happens internally among all three or four cooks what should be done now see should we throw the sambar throwing of sambar means there is a risk now now everything is ready except sambar see now this is the matter brought to the notice and agreed by all now somebody rejected now somebody objects no not doing now that person is free otherwise if everybody takes decision even though this work is one person's responsibility it is one person's mistake actually everybody becomes responsible to it now examining the financial statement compliance with the law presentation and disclosure ensuring audit report compliance with the law so this six responsibilities are the joint and several responsibilities and this is your individual responsibility how the examination questions will come how you need to answer what type of tricks they will use that we will see but are you clear about this you remember then audit planning and risk assessment auditor need to develop engagement partner from everything every uh, joint auditor should be there they should develop a joint audit plan identify the division of area ascertain the reporting responsibility teams efforts and decide the preliminary engagement activity and ascertain the nature extent timing and extent of the resources required this is your joint audit plan now this has got a flavor of sa 300 in sa 300 you have got a audit plan and audit strategy if you see this if you see that it looks like a strategy thing like you have to see how much team will be required what all the preliminary engagement activity so you can consider sa 300's strategy related thing see same as audit strategy it is actually same now allocation of the work should be done with the mutual discussion who should do what now division identifiable units or specific area say somebody so one of the cook may be given responsibility for hand wash like water who should bring that water it may be one person's responsibility now division may also be based on assets liabilities income expenditure certain areas may be covered by all the people discuss and document sign and communicate with the tcwg and get one engagement letter this is on allocation of work this is also important they may ask you how the allocation of work should happen now audit conclusion 
so joint auditors need not review the work of other people straight away you can go ahead with your area of work however before finalization each auditor should discuss and communicate with the respective conclusions what conclusions you are come up like you have prepared some suite did you face any challenges there did you see anything un unexpected things that you have supposed to communicate the moment you communicate it becomes a joint responsibility now if i am support different then i should give you different opinion there understood the catch here no now joint auditor shall issue single audit report i cannot give different however if there is a disagreement each can give a separate report but they both have to give a cross reference now communicate with the tcwg if you are expecting to modify the audit report you have to communicate along with the proposed wordings also so this is all about your joint audit sa29299 yes from now we will see the q and s okay any doubts here all significant deficiencies now what is the significant deficiency that's your judgment you have to communicate to tcwg in writing all deficiencies you are going to communicate to the man mm. no have they told you how the significant non compliances to be communicated ha huh, significant de uh, deficiency in writing same thing no no wait 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 2 50 what happens in 250 all significant non compliance to tcwg yes generally you will tell no suppose something happened if it is not significant will you not go and tell communicate the management because see, if there is any non compliance happened okay why non compliance happened the only and only reason for non compliance happened because your internal controls are weak that the first question i asked how on earth management can comply with the law internal control so if there is any non compliance happened and if that non compliance happened should be significant definitely that means there is a significant deficiency go and talk to cwg if it is not significant deficiency that means there is a failure in internal control go and tell the management perfect clear no Yes so this is all about it friends